welcome to Bowser Training Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. Today we're going to talk about this problem called Lead Code uh, Invalid Transactions. It's a relatively new problem, but it's actually pretty simple. So the problem is giving you a list of transactions. A transaction is invalid if the amount exceeds $1,000 or if this transaction occurs within and including 60 minutes of another transaction with the same name in a different city. It's kind of like a real world problem. Um, uh, if so, so return a list of a transaction they are possibly, that are possibly invalid. You may return the answer in any order. So if you are solving lead code problems or any kind of ACM, ICPC or top coder questions, you know, if they say something like this, that means it's probably going to be a set because the order doesn't really matter. And um, so the example would be, okay, give you a transactions, Alice, you know, um, at the time, let's say 20 and then 800, whatever money currency in Mountain View and Alice is also in uh, time 50, $100 and then in Beijing. So this is within um, 60 minutes. And then apparently Alice is in two different places, which is not possible. So that's why both of the transactions are suspicious. So, or it could be if you spend more than 12, uh, 1,000, so this transaction is also invalid. Uh, they have, they give you a bunch of constraints. So yeah, it's relatively an implementation question. So I think at this moment we can directly think of, okay, let's just go through the transactions. And if the, um, if it's a amount is a lot larger than 1,000, we just put it to the result. Uh, one of the caveat is you probably want to use a set for deduplication uh, because, you know, a transaction could be uh, more than 1,000. Uh, that means it's uh, you put it to the set. And then it could also be this is also an invalid due to the uh, time constraint, right? So um, you don't want to add it twice. So you just use a set to dedupe this kind of case. Um, okay, so the, re the example I put here is why the time complexity is uh, o n squared, right? So at first I thought I can do it more efficiently. So that's why uh, I actually trying to sort each of the transaction. Oh, by the way, so here I put it, uh, if you want to flex your muscles ob object oriented design, so you will see later what I did is, is actually I defined a class called the transaction so that whenever I have this line, I just break down, I deserialize this trans uh, this line, CSV line, sorry, comma separated line into a transaction. So essentially, you can see here, given this string, so for each of the string, I just put them into a transaction. So this class, I'll have the the deserialized, uh, the name, time, amount, city, and also the entire string, and then I just parse everything. So it's, it's relatively simple. So at first, I actually implement a compare to methods because this implements comparable, so that I sorted by the time in minutes in uh, ascending order. However, this doesn't really help because we can think of you know, the worst scenario is all the transactions are under the same person's name and all of the transactions are actually uh, within the time 60 minutes bound. So let's say the T1 to T4 is all valid, but a T5 essentially will make all of the previous invalid. You cannot just simply compare T5 to T4 because, you know, you, you should uh, keep keep comparing as long as it is within time window. So that this bad transaction essentially can invalid everything. So that's why we'll have a uh, uh, nested loop here. So when you are iterating through the map, oh, by the way, we have to use a map. I think it just basically record the key is the name and then the value is a list of all the transactions of that person. So here I did a sort, but this sort doesn't really help because here I have a two nested for loop, right? So as long as you see one transaction, you just have to keep going back and see find all the transaction within the time window and see if it's actually an embedded one because you have to add all of the transactions, the embedded one into the into the set. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's all I want to say. So the way I choose to implement it is break it down into transaction. I did this unnecessary sort, but you know you don't need to sort it if you're actually uh, doing it this way. But I'm actually, you know, given this, I'm always going back. Uh, from the current index to the previous one, you can literally just do a like blind for loop for every everything. Um, yeah, the type of complexity is on square, like I said, the space plan is on because you're using an extra list and an extra set. Um, yeah, it's a relatively simple problem. Let me know if, if you actually have a better solution 
better than O n square. It's actually also the problem if you look at constraint also gives it away because you know it says transaction length is less than one thousand. It's not really huge, so n square probably gonna pass the test case. But yeah, anyways, let me know if if you have a better solution than O n square. Um, leave some comments below. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.